Am I the asshole for not paying for my niece to live in Paris? I, 38M, have a brother, Tony, 40M, who I despise. We never got along growing up. In fact, before yesterday, I haven't seen him in three years. My salary is $180,000 and my husband makes more than me. We also have fruitful investments that generate quite a bit of passive income. My husband, 42M, had full custody of his daughter, Harmony, from a previous relationship and she is an angel. We bonded and she really felt like she was my daughter as well. She is now 22, graduated from college magna cum laude, and wants to work in fashion. She loves haute couture and wants to work in Paris. The problem? Paris is expensive and a lot of the positions that would consider her don't pay well, especially with how expensive Paris is. My husband and I decided to surprise her and sponsor her living expenses and additional allowance, so she doesn't have to worry about income and can focus on her dream. She was ecstatic and posted on social media about it. Well, Tony's daughter, Joy, 25F, saw the post and told him. She has also been wanting to work in Paris for years. I found this out because my parents invited my husband and I to dinner, and when we arrived, Tony was there too. The topic of us sending Harmony to Paris conveniently came up. They suggested that we sponsor Joy to go to Paris too because Harmony and Joy were basically cousins and could bond over a shared experience. I calmly said, no, we aren't responsible for financing Joy. Tony can pay for Joy if he wants her to go to Paris. He aggressively responded that he doesn't make enough money for that and we are just showboating our money. I said that it is not our responsibility to send Joy to Paris simply because Harmony was going. They are not sisters and don't even have a relationship with each other. So if Tony couldn't afford it, tough st. This led to a long drawn out argument and then it came out that Tony had already told Joy a month ago that we promised to pay. He also said that, I would be a shish, tty uncle if I didn't pay for my niece but would pay for someone who isn't even my biological daughter. Now, this is where I might be the asshole because my blood boiled. I said that Joy was not my niece because he is not any brother of mine. My husband and I left and, shortly after, Joy called me begging to pay to let her go. I was still enraged and yelled, I don't understand how you and your father think you can use me as an ATM when neither of you have ever been family to me. Pay for yourself, and I hung up. After a few more hours, I have cooled down and started seeing the family backlash against me on social media. A lot of people say that I am punishing Joy because I hate Tony. I'm still not going to pay for her, but Joy technically is innocent in all of this, I guess. And a lot of my resentment is towards Tony, not her. My parents have called and said they were disappointed in how I think of family, so am I the asshole? Not the asshole. If Tony couldn't afford it, tough street p much. Not the asshole at all, and while you spoke very strongly to your brother, he was being an aggressive mooch and thoroughly deserved to be torn down. What I really hate is the way your parents trapped you into this confrontation. They didn't tell you what was in store when they invited you to dinner, right? Just suddenly there it is. Gimme gimme. Of course, you have a wonderful relationship with your daughter and not much of one with your niece, so the thinking that it's only symmetrical that you should pay for joy is stupid. But your brother isn't thinking. He wants money from you because he wants money fro zero mail you. That's all it is. A mooch. And you should tell the relatives calling up to attack that they can pay for joy if they feel that way about it. So, finance a basic stranger simply because she's blood. No. You owe her nothing. Not the asshole. I'm disappointed your family sees you as an ATM. Not the asshole. Not the asshole there is a huge difference to supporting your daughter, step, and supporting a niece. Am I the asshole for taking my switch after being driven away by the other players? BFF, 17 male, came over for a few days to celebrate OBS, older brother, 19 male, birthday a few days ago. It was all fun and games for a while, until yesterday. Us three and my SB, stepbrother, 15 male, were playing my Nintendo Switch in the living room. Laughing and joking while playing Jackbox, specifically trivia murder party and faking it. The whole night BFF and Obe would make subtle jabs at me, and my SB would bandwagon off of it because that's how little brothers tend to be. Most of the time I tend to brush them off, since I'm more or less used to being the butt end of all the jokes, we started playing fake in it, where I saw an influx of me being the faker. They continuously, despite admittedly having no reason to, voted me and I would continuously lose first round. 
This made the game virtually impossible for me to play. I asked them to stop, but even with a round or two of asking, they ignored me. This combined with their reoccurring comments throughout the night made me start to feel unwelcome. So before I blew up, and without sounding angry or frustrated, I went downstairs. After 1.52 hours of them sitting upstairs playing my Switch and showing no interest in getting me back, I got hungry went upstairs, to which none of them spoke a word to me while I ate. I decided, since I let them play my Switch for so long, that I wanted to play by myself for a little bit. I tell them a couple times, hey, I might grab my Switch and play Pokemon. And they all ignored me. After eating, I ended up following through and grabbing my Switch. I go downstairs to play. SB goes upstairs to his room. Ob and BFF follow me downstairs after a bit to Ob's room, which is right beside mine. I didn't think anybody was mad, because Ob and BFF immediately sounded like they found something to do. Later I go into Ob's room because through the wall I heard the sounds of him and BFF playing a Star Wars game. I didn't know which, so I asked, Hey, what game are you guys playing? To which BFF ignored me and Ob replied, I dunno, we could be playing Jackbox. And then kicked me out of his room after no other interaction. All the while BFF just sat there and agreed with kicking me out. I went back upstairs. After about half an hour, BFF comes upstairs to grab a snack and I ask him why Ob is mad. For a good reason. To which I followed BFF into the garage to ask why. You took the switch away to play Pokemon, which you never do. I reply with, because I felt unwelcome playing with you guys after you literally stopped me from playing the game, and I wanted to play my Switch, he replies with, then tell us to stop and we would have. Feeling unwelcome is a stupid excuse, try not being a little bitch. And after a bit more of yelling back and forth, we dispersed and he went downstairs and I stayed upstairs for the next hour or so before I went downstairs to sleep. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. You BFF is not a BFF. They purposely excluded you and then treated you like dirt. You gave them more than enough warning and tried to be included, but they snubbed you. They are certainly ta. They value that switch more than they value you, and that's pretty disgusting behavior. Especially from a BFF. I say drop them to be honest. Edit. That switch is yours. It belongs to you and not to them. They are not entitled to it ever, and they need to grow up. If that guy is, your, BFF, you definitely need a better class of friends. He seemed far more interested in your brothers. Not the asshole. Somebody that acts like that when other people are around aren't your friend. Not the asshole. BFF is not actually your BFF. I'd talk to your parents about your older brother and stepbrother being such jerks to you, and stop hanging out with your supposed BFF. I've been there. Not the asshole for taking the switch, and you need to drop these chuckle fucks as much as possible. Am I the asshole for ordering more food after I heard we were splitting the check? So I, 21M, and a few friends went to celebrate a mutual friend for his birthday. It was organized by his partner and we were planning on going to a kind of upscale restaurant in our city. Think, suit and tie dress code enforced. I showed up with my girlfriend and we were having a good time. We checked the prices beforehand, and me and my girlfriend set a budget we wouldn't go over since we have other priorities besides dumping it all on a dinner party. We order the food and are having a good time. We stay under budget, but I notice my friend's partner continually ordering more and more expensive drinks and foods. I don't think much of it since it's his partner birthday. But when the bill comes, the table of 10 is suddenly told the gifts were expected to give us to split the check. Now it's my friend's birthday and I've known him for close to a decade. I would have been fine splitting his bill however expensive it should be. To put into perspective, me and my girlfriend bill came out to just under $200 give or take. The entire bill was nearing $800 and they still wanted to get desert. I noticed me and my girlfriend had the least amount of food and didn't get multiple appetizers, drinks etc. The thing is I know I'm more financially stable than my friends my age since I really just had the cosmic luck of landing a decent job out of school. So I could or contributed, but frankly I felt this was a trap to get me to pay more than we budgeted. If they communicated prior to the dinner as an obligation, that's one matter but suddenly telling us after everyone is mostly done eating dinner seems sketchy at the very least. I had a quick text conversation with my girlfriend and we both decided to order expensive desserts raising the price even more. Now suddenly when the bill comes, some people especially my friend's boyfriend doesn't have enough money to pay the equal between everyone. 
They start bickering in a public restaurant, and my friend accuses me of intentionally raising the bill outside of their budget. I countered with how it was kind of rude to just expect people to pay stuff for him. And he said it's his birthday. To keep the peace I paid for only his meal, but left his drink in desert tab for everyone else to split. I left with my girlfriend and paid our bills. When we were leaving they were still arguing over the bill. That was yesterday. I woke up this morning to find on multiple social media how I'm such a terrible person. How I raised the bill by ordering extra food. Mind you they were all planning on deserts while we weren't. My girlfriend says I did the moral thing paying for my friend's food, but I'm livid I got peer pressured into it. Am I the asshole? Too long did not read. I go to a birthday dinner at an expensive restaurant, and halfway through the meal I'm told we're splitting the check. To even out how much food everyone got, I ordered extra food to make it fair. Info. Decided to put the vague prices since I know my friends have read it. Me and my girlfriend Bill came up to $200 just on trays plus one appetizer we split. The bill was nearing $800 at just on trays plus appetizers. The final bill came out to $1.20 2K-ish. But the crime comes in when you add up the additional drinks for 10 people it came out to $2,000 plus. And most importantly, myself and my girlfriend didn't drink since we worked this morning. Info. What was the final total of the bill? Can you please confirm the total number of people at the table? It looks like 10 but want to confirm. This is needed because based on what I see, you were 2 out of 10 people and you were $200 of 800, your math is bad and you were already a larger portion of the bill. Not only are you not the asshole, you went above and beyond even paying for your friend's dinner. But, are you sure you are his friend and not simply his ATM? Info. Did you pay for his meal and you and your GF? If so, you are not the asshole. They are. They were literally expecting you to cover part of their meal. Respond to the messages with. I paid for birthday boy's meal, and I covered my own bill. All you people had to cover was the drinks and your own meals. I covered much more than you did here. Dot. Edit. Hit post too soon. Not the asshole it seems to me they knew you guys were going to get cheaper stuff than them and still wanted to ride off your money because why else would they be mad that you got expensive desserts if they were also all planning on getting desserts, which would have cost a lot of money anyways even if they picked cheaper ones. This is really 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 hard to read. Am I the asshole for not taking in my in-laws and not helping them with medical bills? Throwaway account. I, 24M. Do pretty well for myself. Have my own place a stable, boring job that doesn't require much of my attention and pays well while I work from home. Have plenty of hobbies buy nice clothes. Just in general have a pretty comfortable life. My fiancé, 26F, moved in when we got engaged about two years ago. Important context is that everything is on my name. And she doesn't pay rent only bills specific to her, like buying the things she likes to eat with her own money, and helps with some of the utility bills. About 10 months back my father-in-law, 56, was diagnosed with a pretty curable case of lung cancer, since he had an early-ish diagnose. But my in-laws don't have the best financial condition and these months of medical bills and other expenses might see them homeless and father-in-law without money to stay on his treatment. My in-laws have always treated me like shit, and were always openly against my relationship to their daughter, to the point where they'd explicitly would tell her not to bring me to family gatherings and invite her ex. Things of this nature, and yes she had my back and stopped attending said family gatherings, but she still loves her family and they mean a lot to her, so she asked if we could take them in and help her father with his treatment. To which I said no, without thinking twice. She asked if I can't think on it for a few days and I replied, if I think on it for a few days I'll only be more sure of my already obvious conclusion. They're not setting foot here and I don't care what happens to either of them, she replied saying something along the lines of us having the income to spare and that is true but around 70% of it is my income not hers, and space, also true, and asked me if my hobbies and spending money on myself, that kinda got me annoyed since I spend a lot of money on US not just me, although yeah I have a few hobbies I spend on, was really more important than her family to which I simply said, yeah, it is, now, my fiancé didn't blow up at me or anything, she's not one for conflict but she called me an asshole and has been staying last couple of days over at her parents, still calls me before bed every night but is still clearly pissed at me. Very very pissed. Am I the asshole? Edit. Since a lot of people asked and some pointed out it could be important info. I come from a Japanese family and she, her family and her ex are all African American. 
Also another frequent question is if I know why they dislike me. I don't, they won't say anything to my face ever but have disliked me from day one and I know that they argued with my fiancé because of me several times, especially in the earlier days. Update. She called and said she's coming over tomorrow to talk. We'll probably update here or make an update post. Not the asshole. If fiancé isn't paying any bills other than her personal ones, she should have a fair amount of disposable income that she could leverage to help her folks. Certainly no responsibility of ops. The in-laws have made it abundantly clear that they don't consider him family, so it's quite rich to now turn around and expect what would be considered a familial obligation. Not the asshole. You owe them nothing and they have treated you appallingly. They don't think you are good enough for their daughter. Why do they think they are good enough for your money? And your fiancé isn't pulling her fair share of the bills. Right now you are pretty much paying for everything. If your in-laws move in that amount will probably triple. Let's be honest. They will be home all the time running up all the utilities and expect you to buy good food that they like. You're lucky that she is only your fiancé and not your wife at this point. If you allow them to move in, I don't think they will ever move out. You may have some difficult decisions to make over the next few months. I'll never understand why Americans don't demand universal health care, uncivilized country. Not the asshole, but I don't see your relationship surviving this. Gotta go with Esh. Just based on this line. I don't care what happens to either of them. You don't owe them your money or lodging, or even your respect. But there were several ways to go about this more tactfully with your fiancé, who is clearly going through it.